week. Now turning our attention back to the GA and to Ulster GA. Time to say a very good morning to the former Cavan footballer, Shawnee Johnston. Shawnee, good morning. How are things? Morning, men. How are you? Keeping well. Thanks for joining us as per usual. We figured we'd uh, take a bit of an in-depth look to uh, head to the uh, Ulster Senior Football Championship semi-final action this weekend. So Derry versus Monaghan is at Healy Park in Oma this Saturday at 5 o'clock and then on Sunday at 4 in Clonus is the meeting of Down in Armagh. Uh, we might as well start with the with the opening game, uh, Shawnee figure. So Derry Monaghan in, in, in Oma. This one's getting the appetite whetted, I think. A lot of people expect it to be a Derry Tyrone semi-final. Uh, it hasn't panned out that way, but either way, Rory Gallagher... He probably has a few things to iron out. The goal concessions, maybe in particular against Dublin and, and uh, Fermanagh as well, will be will be one of those things, Shawnee. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose it's interesting. People are kind of making a correlation towards these goals are getting conceded when Connor Glass is not on the field. So um, that's a big thing for Derry. Uh, I'm a big fan of this Derry team, but I think a huge thing for them is obviously going to be squad depth, particularly going into. Um, the All Ireland series where matches are coming thick and fast. They need their best players on the field. That was probably seen in the league final. They were without McCaig, without McAvoy, without Connor Glass. So when they have their best 15 slash best 18 players on the field, because he doesn't tend to use too much more than that, um, they're going to be a formidable outfit and it'll be a challenge for anyone. But when they're down one or two players, you've seen it when, without McCaig. They struggle to pick up Con O'Callaghan. He had done such a good job on him in Celtic Park. And then without class, their defensive structure isn't just as as compact and as strong. So keeping all their best players in the field is going to be huge for Derry. When you think of those big men, you mentioned Conor Glass, um, Niall Toner as well, and Brendan Rodgers. A little bit naive, you felt watching that, that Fermanagh match. Fermanagh seemed to go long with a lot of the kickouts early on, which just played into Derry's hands. You'd imagine if you're Vinnie Corey and you're Rory Began, especially this weekend, you're, you're thinking about that. I mean, the long kickouts against Derry just don't seem to work most of the time. Yeah, but, you know, there's risk reward too because if you go short against Derry, you're going to be defending or you're going to be attacking against 15 bodies mm. for literally every single attack that you have. So the idea of potentially, and it's a big it's a big word, potentially winning your long kickouts gives you a better opportunity to hurt them, gives you more of a chance of getting ball into O'Hanlon, McCarran, McManus. Um, but like Derry are going to do, like they, they don't seem to change in terms of their kickout strategy. They'll go man to man and they'll, they'll hope to pick off maybe two or three, not maybe not even that amount, maybe two short kickouts of Rory Beggins where they'll put really, real pressure on and they'll be able to turn over one or two of them, and they'll hope to get a goal chance out of that. But look, Monaghan need to have a lot of variety in their game. Are they good enough to beat Derry? Yeah. Um, do I think they will? I, I don't think they will. I, I just think this Derry team are they're kind of on a crest of a wave. They're very, very well set up. But Mon- Monaghan's big thing, and they got caught on it last year, is that Derry against the better teams probably are going to require goals to win the game. So if Monaghan can keep their, you know, keep their goal intact, it gives them a far better chance of winning this game. Yeah, I think it was was it three twelve. Derry scored Monaghan seventeen points last year, so oh, it was the goals that you say that that uh, that killed them off. Like interestingly, watching the the both Derry and Monaghan's quarterfinal games, you see Oren Lynch and Rory Began both in that hybrid quarterback sort of role. I think people have called it, where they are getting forward to the ball a lot, and and even we saw Began his ball into Carl Gallagher led directly to Stephen O'Hanlon's uh, opening goal for Monaghan. Do you expect to see more of the same? Both goalkeepers utilizing that kind of outfield option plenty this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, Lynch's role gets, I suppose, doesn't nearly get as much scrutiny as, as a begging. Uh, he gave that beautiful backdoor uh, kick pass cut to Paul Cassidy for mm-hmm. the goal against Fermanagh. Uh, Began give it in for the for Gallagher for O'Hanlon's goal. So they're both crucial parts of uh, the defensive strategy of both teams, but also the offensive strategy of both teams. And, you know, you, you get a lot of man marking jobs in Ulster Championship. So you'll get a lot of players that teams will want to play that quarterback role and they'll be man marked and they won't necessarily be able to drop off. For example, if Derry go down the left hand side, they will they will likely want to get someone on that forty five meter line to play that quarterback role. But they will probably want it to be a McGuigan or uh or a Niall Toner or an Ethan Doherty, but that's not gonna happen because Monin will have marker for them. So that allows Lynch to tip up the field at his ease potentially and get in that role. And now these goalkeepers are so comfortable on the ball that it's gonna come a stage where they're nearly gonna have to be picked up from inside their own 45 like Began is so astute 
Lynch is now, so is Stuart. Uh, all the top teams, or a lot of the top teams, Rafferty is now probably the best in the country at it because he has the pace to carry the ball. Like he's quicker than most uh, outfield players. I've seen him pulling away from several Calvin players at the weekend. So it's become a real, real important part of the game. And these boys are such good kick passers of the ball and finders of their own men that they're, they're really becoming a pivotal part of the attacking strategies. How do the respective teams, Shawnee, handle Shane McGuigan and Conor McManus? Because we saw Fermanagh try to go man for man for, for large swathes of the early part of that game with Derry and it just led to a lot of space for McGuigan and, and chances of pot shots from, from very close in. Uh, and then McManus, we saw what he could do in, uh, against Tyrone as well. Just just unbelievable. Uh, a lot of points from, from Freeze, but uh, really involved in a lot of the good things that Monaghan did. So how, how do you handle those those two players? Well, it's probably unlikely Derry will go too far away from what they did last year, Shane. You know, I know they went McCaig on McCarran, did a job. Like McCaig is a phenomenal player and he doesn't care about the ball. I know that sounds silly, but he, he doesn't. He just wants to stop his opposing number getting on the scoreboard. And it's a huge, you know, mentality strength of his. He's just going out with completely that mindset. They put McCluskey on McManus last year. Again, he did a good job. But like Derry, you know, when, when we talk about man marking roles for Derry, it, it, you're not being left one v one. You're never being left one v one unless, you know, obviously in Crow Park they got they got caught a bit with a a kind of high ball that went in that was going for a point and and it got dropped short. But that was, like I say, without McAvoy and McCaig, that bit of size in their full back line. But you'd imagine that they'll go McCluskey again uh, on on McManus, uh, try and shore up that D area, stop those little pop balls in. And McManus is really, really good and he's got so much better at winning marks because he knows if he wins a mark, it's a point. No, No matter where it is inside that 45, he's so accurate and he's so smart. He looks in really good shape. He looks pumped up. He was uh, extremely excited in the second half against Tyrone. He's just a class act. McGuigan's a bit different because he will do he will do you know a bit different things than, than McManus. Connor's going to stay inside, try and wait for those moments. Um, you know, I know from speaking to a couple of the real top forwards in the game, they just talk about like I don't need to have twenty possessions. I need to get maybe five or six possessions and make the most of them. If I kick one tree, I've had a brilliant game. McGuigan will come out and get involved in Derry's defensive structure. He will get out and link the play. He will be that quarterback if Monaghan let him. Um, so he has a lot of strings to his bow. He kicked two five against Fermanagh on a very very, very good player. Those two Cullens are, are, are extremely good defenders and he caused them havoc. Now, I know Fermanagh were probably not set up as defensively as usual. They seem to go man-to-man -man a lot and that, you know, if you do that against the likes of McGuigan, he's going to hurt you. So, you know what, uh, Monaghan have a decision to make with him, uh, who to decide to put on him, um, but it's a key matchup for them. The and those matchups will be will be crucial. Even if you look at players like like Stephen O'Hanlon from Monaghan perspective, we saw last week the importance of of a forward just taking on your man. Like he, he decides to take on Conor Myler and it, it leads immediately to a goal. You don't see it very often in Gaelic football, but but when it happens and when it's pulled off by a, by, by a forward, it is lovely to see. And it, it's it's an indicator, as you say, goals wins win these Ulster games more often than not. Yeah, it's class to see. Uh, it's something teams don't do enough because a lot of teams are now so possession orientated they're afraid if you go into the tackle you'll be turned over now the only thing about doing that against potentially a Derry is when he took Myler on he, it was single you know linear line to the goal if, mm. he, if he takes whoever he takes on he's going to meet another body uh, and that's where you come into a bit of trouble against Derry where you just need to be really smart and you need to be able to probe them and probe them and then when you get your opportunity like Stephen O'Hanlon did you need to be able to attack that line and attack that man marker 1v1 because what happens I think to these teams that defend with a lot of bodies is that they're now not used to defending 1v1 so every time Monaghan get a chance with the likes of O'Hanlon with the likes of uh, uh, Ryan O'Toole these boys that have seri serious pace and they get a 1v1 I think it's important that they take that opportunity and that they're really brave in an attacking sense because there's going to be a lot of times where they're not going to be able to do that they're going to need to be able to probe they're going to be need to be able to look for these pop hand passes and get runners coming hard off the shoulder they're going to need to attack down the sidelines because Derry are going to block up that D area so you know really really compact and Monaghan are going to need to get in threes and fours down the sidelines get into the 13 meter line as much as they can because if they can get into that 13 meter line their probability of scoring goes up substantially so look these are things that they're going to be discussing all week and that's what makes for such an intriguing battle
I see uh, Connor Glass is out in a lot of the papers today. He was at a launch yesterday and uh, we kind of touched him a little bit earlier on, but uh, he's obviously had a lot to say about the club final too and I'm sure there's a bit of fire in the belly off the back of that too that uh, keeps him going for the year. Um, what We've talked about him for so long, the impact of him, the age he's at and how much he could uh, end up dominating around the middle for Derry for years to come. Um, people are very aware of his talents and uh, but not always able to um, tone him down what do uh, what do Monaghan do with him? Yeah, look, it, it's not uh, like to me the Derry midfield is now the best midfield in the country. Um, you're looking at Dublin with Fenton and McCarthy, uh, and I think what what helps Glass so much, honestly, is that teams are now focusing so much on Brendan Rodgers. Uh, he's such an attacking force for Derry Rodgers. Like he's exactly what they need because. You know, they know that a lot of their attacks are potentially going to be quite slow because they have 15 men behind the ball. And I know you'll see them sprint up into their full forward line to give them that depth in the attack. But Rodgers allows them to break lines. And when he does that, Glass tends to be off his shoulder. And Glass is a, a better kicker than Rodgers, if that makes sense, in terms of a, a score getter. I think Rodgers is just so quick and powerful and he draws defenders to him and then they can get Doherty and Glass off the shoulder. Uh, Monaghan... Uh, it's a big call for them because they have they have a lot of people to tie down there. You know, a lot of Derry's major influences are going to be coming from deep. Obviously, you have McGuigan up front and Ethan Doherty up front. But, you know, McFall has another couple of weeks in the legs. Potentially, could he start? Potentially, I'd say, he's, is he going to get game time? But with, with, with Glass and Rogers, you're nearly getting to the stage where you're thinking you need to man-mark both of them. But that makes you very, very suspect at the back because, you know, it's taken two people out of your defensive shape. And this Derry team have now become so game-aware that when you're getting man-marked, you've seen Rogers at times with James McCarthy was man-marking him. He would go to the sideline. He would just head off, stay and keep himself out of the attacking sense and allow... Dublin to be down one body in terms of defence. And one body is important, especially to this Derry team. It opens up gaps, particularly in Crow Park, particularly in bigger fields. But, you know, in in, uh, in Oma this weekend, you'll see if Monaghan decide to man-mark both of them, you'll see at times the two of them just pulling themselves out of the attack. They'll hold back. Uh, potentially to try and get in that quarterback role if they can, or even deeper, and they'll allow the other boys to go and attack and, and cut into those holes that are left. The uh, the Armagh down semi final then. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to get a fix on. Uh, I was trying to all the way through with Shawnee, uh trying to figure out which way you were leaning there. By the way, <laughs> Derry, right? Uh, firmly or what are you thinking? I, I think Derry will win. I, can Monaghan beat Derry? I, I just think this Derry team are, are too far ahead of them at the minute. Um, but again, you know. The reliance on goals is a, is a big thing, but you know, I thought that I thought Tyrone would beat Monaghan, and I thought that Tyrone can come and put in a big performance and potentially challenge Derry big time because this Tyrone team, we know that they can put in a big, massive performance. Now, I know Monaghan went and did that in Oma, and Oma is a very difficult place to go and win, um, particularly against the Tyrone team at home that were coming off the back of a good end of end of league campaign. But I just think this Derry team are, are too far down the line. Uh, that confidence boost they got from last year has, has stood them in unbelievable stead. They're looking at winning All-Ireland, but not, not looking at winning All-Ireland without winning an Ulster Championship, I don't think. They're just so competitive about winning every game. You saw their manager on the sideline uh, in Brewster Park, a place he knows well, literally, you know, so combative, so competitive, ch uh, chasing every turnover, ch uh, cheering every score. So, uh, yeah, I just don't see them being beaten this weekend. That's what, we, that's what we want to hear in Monaghan anyway I think Derry are massive favourites not happy now Shawnee you've yeah, upset him yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma, I just you did see. tell me to put the pressure on them before I come on <laughs> good man good man Shawnee I can't see Derry being beaten lads I just can't <laughs> see it. it wink wink get out of it um, Armagh down is the other one in, in Clonus on, uh, on Sunday afternoon Shawnee you'll have seen Armagh up close and personal um, uh, when they beat Cavan in the in the quarter final and, and look they had nine different scorers they were, they were reasonably impressive seven ahead at half time five ahead at, uh, at full time Pretty good performance from Armagh. There's probably more left in the tank still as well. Yeah, pretty good performance. Like the thing, I suppose, for in that game is if if you offered Cavan the majority of those metrics before the game that it took them. Mm. Uh, I think Armagh only won thirty percent of their own kick out the second half. Um, you know they got a lot of scores off turnovers. Cavan gave up the ball far too cheaply to them. But like they've now got an attacking element without a Ryan O'Neill. 
uh, without Stephen Campbell scoring from play. Turbot is a real, you know, he's not called Turbo for nothing. He has gas, he has a jink, uh, and he can finish. Um, so in that regard, he, he's a real test for any defence. Uh, look, our man know they're going to have to brush up on their own kickouts. Cabin put a real squeeze on them, got six points off. It was the only way Cabin were going to really score against them because they couldn't break them down. This our man defensive structure has definitely got a bit stronger in the throughout the National League. So the best way of getting at them is to put real pressure on their, on their long kickout. I think Cabin got six scores off Ethan Rafferty's kickouts. He only won about 50 odd percent of his kickouts. So, um, there's room for improvement. They didn't score for the last 17 minutes people will say well they had their job done the game was won but look you're you're constantly trying to find areas of improvement they had 114 scored I think at about 54 55 minutes and they didn't they didn't push on from that so that's an area for them to to go after their own kick out is an area for them to go after but look they were impressive as you said they had nine different scores if they can get that up to 10 or 11 and have a Rean or Neil back in who kicks three or four points then you know they're going to take beating we chatted after the Antrim game about how they'd showed a bit more ambition in attack that wasn't particularly evident during the league and like maybe again on the basis of, of last week there's more evidence that they're trying to get that ball ahead of the wave you mentioned like Turbot there's obviously Grugan there Campbell and, and a few more as well it looks like they have plenty of options it looks like now I will say that like uh, and again I, I know who I'm speaking to here but obviously Antrim are at a level Cavan are probably a bit, a bit above that and it's another step up again this weekend do you expect that that ambitious Football that trying to get ahead of the defensive wave to continue for our as the season progresses. Yeah, well, look, is it another step up? Like you know, Cavan comfortably put down a side in the National League. Yeah, down are going to get serious boosts from beating Donegal. And if there's one thing about a downside coming to an Ulster semi final after having a win under their belt, they'll be confident of winning. They're going to be very defensive. You see them very similar to. Donegal a couple of years ago where they try and suck bodies into that D area and then they'll get three and four bodies around and down are purely based on pace Armagh aren't going to be naive in terms of they'll keep their defensive structure because they know down want uh, Armagh when they're in an attacking sense to suck as many bodies up forward as possible and then hit them with real pace in terms of Liam Kerr Daniel Guinness and these boys that are going to come hard from their half back line um, but the defensive structure for Armagh is important um, they now have, as you said, those names up front in terms of Grugan, O'Neill, Mernon's a key file for, for Turbot up there. So they have options up there. Um, again, down very like Derry. Now they're nowhere near as far on the, down the line as Derry, but they rely on goals as well. They love getting goals. They had opportunities. I remember I saw them in Breffney Park this year and they had two or three real good goal chances. So I think down are going to need goals to win the game. Um I just want to take you back to the first point that you made there in relation and it's a fair enough observation that Down and Cavan are probably not a million miles away from each other. I was convinced that after the Talton Cup last year that uh, it was going to be a major boost for Westmeath and for Cavan that they were going to be able to show the teams that are roughly at their level that the value of all those extra games they got. How disappointing on the basis of all of that um, and I know that you say obviously a lot of the metrics were good they had so many chances that they were wasteful you know an extra little bit of percentage of those go over suddenly it's a different game but how disappointing was it uh, with the outcome last night uh, last weekend Yeah, it, it, it's extremely disappointing it's, it's also extremely frustrating because I mentioned those metrics like, and, and I don't want to get into because Armagh were we're the better team. Armagh deserved to win. Um, but Cavan had like nine or ten more possessions than them. They had ten more shots than them. So they had a load. They had enough ball to win the game. Um, they didn't ask enough questions of the Armagh defence. They probably didn't probe them enough. They took shots from outside the scoring zone, which is a decision-making thing as well as a skill execution thing. So in that regard, you'd imagine the players and management would be very frustrated. Um, like I said, they had enough ball, but they didn't work them hard enough. Um, and, and it's nearly... I, I get this sense, and I, ha I got it even with with Donny Gall. When te and when teams talk, and with Derry at the minute, teams talk about defensively set up teams. What does that do to the the, the mindset of the opposition that are playing them? I, I think it just makes them force things a little bit more. You'll see teams against Derry going, okay, we there's, we have to get a shot off really really quickly here, or else they're going to have fifteen behind the ball. Teams did it against Donny Gall. There's an extra panic in their attacking sense where it's nearly like there's a shot clock on them in basketball when there's not. Okay, we know Donny Gall, Derry down, are going to defend with fifteen behind the ball. Let's just keep the ball. Let's probe them. Let's go down the sideline. Let's stack our runners to far side and see can we hurt them in those. 
areas instead of the constant panic of, oh, they're going to have so many men behind the ball. Everyone's talking now. Our men are defensively far more solid than they were. They've worked really hard defensively during the National League. It's going to be so much harder to score against them. So what do we need to do? We need to get a shot off as quickly as we can. But you don't need to do that. And I think that's what Cavan did at the weekend. You know, they took shots from areas that, they wouldn't usually do. They didn't break out of their defence quick enough to, to get Armagh under pressure. There was one, you know, one example in particular, Rushing Kieran won the ball. He hit a beautiful pass up to Rushing Brady for their second point of the game and they were able to hurt Armagh in a fast transition. Um, Armagh want to play with a really fast transition. They'll, they'll, you know, they'll suck you in and then they'll break really, really quickly and they were able to do that better than Calvin. I think that was the key difference between the two teams at the weekend. What's the prediction then, Shawnee, for, for Armagh down? Who are Derry going to play in the Ulster final? <laughs> Derry or Monaghan Shane sorry of course, of course. Um, yeah, who are look you have to fancy Armagh I, I honestly think that this would be you know I think their man, Kieran McKeever come out and said oh we're looking ahead to six weeks down the line I, I, I don't buy that I, I think just my Armagh team really 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 want to win an Ulster Championship they certainly want to get to an Ulster Final they're 15 years without getting to an Ulster Final they're not going into an Ulster Semi-Final against their very very near neighbours uh, and not wanting to put in a massive performance it's very hard to see Armagh not winning Down have definitely made improvements I think they'll make substantial improvements under uh, with this management team but it's hard to see them being there yet they didn't get out of Division 3 Yes, to beat a Division One team in Donegal, but they're going through their issues at the minute. So, look, I, I fancy Armagh to win it. Looking forward to the action anyway, regardless, across uh, Saturday and Sunday. Shawnee, great stuff as always. Thanks a million. Thanks very much, man. Great stuff. Shawnee Johnston, their former Cavan football.